Today, I'm gonna to share with you the latest iteration of my ham radio portable antenna kit. So let's jump into it. So the summer season is winding down and I thought now would be a really good time to share with you what I've been using as my portable antennas as I do as I've been doing uh, parks on the air uh, deployments over the last few months. Um, I've done a few other videos on my portable antenna kit, but you know things are always in flux, things are changing, so I thought now would be a really good time to circle back and uh, show you what I've been taking out into the field. So what I use, uh, this is a Husky uh, five gallon tote. It's got um, a polycarbonate uh, clear plastic cover and um, I think the base is made out of rugged uh, polyethylene. This thing I've had for two and a half years now. It is very durable. It's water uh, tight and I've been extremely happy with it. Uh, one of the things I like about it is it's got these hinges. I can open it up either direction, uh, but if I pop all four hinges, I can just take the cover off. And you can see uh, it is gasketed. So it keeps uh, dust, it keeps uh, moisture out, and um, it's a great little tote. Uh, of course, on the top um, is the uh, official POTA flag. Um, when we're camping, I like to fly this. It's uh, um, that's about that's probably about the only thing <laughs> you'll see um, you know that uh, uh, highlighting that I'm a uh, parks on the air operator because usually I'm pretty I'm pretty low-key about things I don't put a lot of stuff out to attract attention except I uh, will put the flag up at the campsite uh, so for um, organization I usually keep the I, I, I try to stack the case so that uh, things that I'm gonna need first on the activation are on top and then I just kind of drill down from there. So the first thing we've got is the rope bag and in here, uh, these are um, just um, Amazon uh, luggage organizers. They work, uh, I got some of the smaller ones and I got some of the medium ones. The small one I use for my ropes. I got a, a larger one that I use for coax. Of course, we've got the weaver, uh, a throw, a throw bag in here. This is the 12 ounce. Uh, you don't really need anything heavier than that. I carry a variety of, um, of ropes. Uh, this is a, um, a 3 seconds of an inch uh, paracord. Uh, pretty lightweight. I've had good luck with this. This is 100 feet. I carry a couple hundred feet uh, lengths of that. Uh, this is my main throw rope. And then I have several smaller ropes. This is standard uh, paracord. I keep them color coded by length, so I know that the pinks are 25 feet. I got several of those. I got some 50 footers that are red. Um, and then I think I got another 50 footer. This one is orange. This is an older rope. Uh, so I usually change my ropes out. Oh, uh, every couple of years or so, depending on how the how the wear looks on them. Uh, these are pretty good shape yet, and um, we'll keep using those for another season. Next up is the coax bag. Uh, again, another luggage organizer. This one's just a little bit bigger. And uh, this one, in it, um, nothing fancy, none of those crazy flex cables. Um, but um, 25 feet, or excuse me, 50 feet of RG8X. This brand is Cable Experts. I've had this cable for a very long time. I love, um, and I, I like it a lot. It's been very reliable. Uh, Mini 8 really, <laughs> you know, um, works great for uh, parks on the air activation. Then I got two other uh, 25 foot lengths of 8X or Mini 8. Uh, this is a no name, I think, uh, cable. That's one of my spare cables. And then this is another uh, Cable Experts brand uh, cable. Um, haven't, haven't noticed really a difference between the no-name Chinese stuff and the, and the better quality cable, I guess. It all seems to work well for me, but I do, I do really like the, um, the good Made in USA cables. So they, the, there, there is a definite difference in the quality of the connectors. So. That's the um, cable bag. Um, now we can now once um, we get into the meat of things, and that is our antennas. Uh, 
So for this last summer's activation, really the big star has been my uh, 9 to 1 random wire antenna. I built this antenna last fall. It's, uh, I've got a video on it, so I'll throw that in the, in the uh, description down below. This is a 9 to 1 uh, transformer. Uh, easy, you can easily make one of these yourself. Uh, just I just put it on a little piece of plywood as a frame. You can use plastic. You can make a winders or whatnot um, For the wire. This is a 14 gauge uh, THHN uh, Stranded wire. Thanks to Joe. Uh, he gave me some scrap wire <laughs> uh, This stuff's really nice. It's got a really nice um, outer outer sh uh, sheath on it. So it's um, they're very flexible. I've uh, uh, I've got two, there's two wires here. Uh, one of them is, is 74 feet long, and then there's a shorter 30-some foot piece that I use as my counterpoise. Um, on the end is just a insulator. Uh, this is an electric fence insulator you can find at your farm and ranch store. Uh, I like to keep my cables organized uh, with these little bongo ties. They are, um, in effect, I got a, I got a bag of them, of some extras in here, uh, the great little, um, uh, great little tie uh, works I like them better than velcro uh, you know um, because they just they don't they won't come undone once you get them around your cable um, so that's my main antenna the 9 to 1 and then the reason I like this uh, the random wire or the non-resonant antennas is um, I can get this one will take me down to 8 meters and all the way up to 6 meters with the tuner I could get on just about any band so if I'm gonna be out for a weekend and I got the space this is the antenna that usually goes up uh, and then uh, the next antenna has been, of course, my 17-foot uh, whip. Um, this is the, the, and the Wolf River uh, Sporty 40 uh, coil uh, for the 40-meter uh, the band. So I'll use the 17-foot so or the 213-inch whip. Uh, the 213 is actually a little bit longer than 17 feet. But I'll use that whip for 20 meters and above because that whip is fully extended. Uh, a resonant quarter wave antenna on the 20 meter band and then I just shorten it uh, if I want to get on any band higher than that. If I want to get on 40 meters then I will put the sporty 40 coil uh, at the base of the antenna. In fact I'll assemble the whole thing and then I'll just use this um, little piece of wire as a bypass to um, engage the, um, the coil. Uh, right now where um, since there's a connection here, we'll, we'll disengage the coil. If I pop the um, connector, then the, now the coil is in line and um, that, that turns my 20 meter antenna in very quickly into a 40 meter antenna. Base of the antenna is the, is my favorite uh, jaw mount. And uh, you can clamp this onto anything. You got know, picnic tables, barbecue grills. I clamp it onto a steel a base that I use for an advertising flag and um, I'll show you that in the, in the video here, the clip here too. Uh, so that's my uh, vertical antenna kit. If I'm doing day activations um, in a day use area out at a park for just a couple hours, I'm going to put the vertical antenna up because I can put this up in five minutes or less and tear it down in just as, just as fast a time. So why mess with wire, you know, if you're only going to be out for a couple hours, maximize your time on the air by using a, you know, a, a just a, a more convenient, more efficient to deploy antenna system. All right, now my next antenna is, uh, I like to keep, I usually like to keep a wire antenna and a vertical antenna. Um, and I got a second wire antenna in here, and that is this one. This is the uh, Coffee and Ham Radio's Apollo antenna. Uh, we uh, did a review on this uh, not too long ago. It's, uh, I like this antenna a lot. In fact, of, of all of my NFED half-wave antennas that I've used uh, in recent history, this is definitely the, my favorite so far. Um, it comes as a kit, so you can, um, and it's not that difficult to put together. It's, um, I was, once you get it, once you get it uh, set up and adjusted, it's just, <laughs> uh, those dips just fall in the right place. I've got this one tuned so that it is resonant at the bottom of each band, the bottom of 40, the bottom of 20, the bottom of 15 and 10. Uh, but there's enough bandwidth to really use this without a tuner. So I could use this anywhere. Um, at, on the uh, 
digital CW modes at the bottom of the band and the phone portions at the at the top of the band. So I've been really happy with this antenna and we're gonna um, I'll continue to use this. It comes, um, you know, it's for 40 meters, 67 feet of wire on this side, or 65 feet, I think. And then there's about a 20, and then about a 20 some foot counterpoise on that. Um, mix works really well. Um, now I've been using the window screen ground plane for my vertical antenna and uh, that's what really makes my the, the deployments uh, so quick and easy. But I do carry the my old uh, <laughs> radials in the in the bo uh, in the bottom of my, my bag, and sometimes I do pull these out. Uh, depending on the situation, I may find that I might need some extra um, ground radio network, so I can I can put these I can use these in, in, instead of the the window screen. I can use these in conjunction with the window screen. Uh, but they've been floating around at the bottom of the kit and I haven't replaced them with anything else yet. So I do carry um, my conventional ground network yet for my vertical antenna. Uh, what I have here are two bundles of four radials each, 16 feet long. So there's a total of eight 16 foot radials in my hand right there. And then finally, one antenna that has not gotten a lot of airplay in the last year, but for some reason it's still at the bottom of my bag, is the 20 40 meter link dipole antenna. I built this one several years ago and uh, this has been you know another one of those workhorse antennas. Uh, once you get it on the air just tremendous um, operation on the 20 meters and 40 meters bands. Uh, but with the solar cycle you know creeping up there towards its peak uh, the downside of this antenna is that it's just two bands 20 and 40. So as um, I, I want to get on. I want to get on more bands now with a lot of these activations. 15 meters, uh, 17 meters, 10 meters, and um, this antenna. It just hasn't been um, utilized as much in the last year, but it's been sitting at the bottom of the kit. I'll probably um, continue since it doesn't take up much space. I may still carry it with me, and that is the extent of it. Um, other than a roll of electrical tape. Uh, you never know when you might need some electrical tape. And like I said, you know, um, least important things go at the bottom. Uh, most important things go at the top so that I can just drill when I'm when I'm deploying. I can just drill down and um, grab what I need. So that is my portable antenna kit that I take out in the field. If it's a day activation or if it's uh, if it's an entire weekend weekend camping uh, for parks on the air. So. Questions, comments, leave them in the video description down below. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, do you carry anything different than I do? Um, would you swap anything out? Um, let me know. But for this time, I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73.